In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Visconti Medici Oversize. So let's jump straight to the end with my thoughts on this pen. I like using this pen and it's not uncomfortable in my hand, but I do find the barrel locking system they use, it's weird because my fingers almost fiddle with it while I'm writing. The result for me is my penmanship isn't as good with this pen as it is with other pens. That leaves me in a position where I don't use this pen as often as I would like because my penmanship, I know, isn't going to be as good. Now, that's not a result of the barrel locking system per se. It's more my feeling on it. And it's not that it's uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable. It's that I feel it and have a tendency to keep feeling at it while I'm writing, which leads to an almost like jitteriness in some of my penmanship. So I do like it and I love using it, but I'm wondering if a finer nib would help versus this broad, which is a little stubby, but again, I come back to the barrel locking system makes me say this is a pen that if I was to be purchasing over again, I might skip. Now that we know how I feel about the Visconti Medici Oversize, let's see how I got to that opinion, starting with the unboxing. The Visconti Medici Oversized comes in a box like this, which contains a box like this, Visconti, not with just their pens, but all the way through the experience in unboxing, they definitely take the art to another level. And you get a really top-notch performance in presentation all the way through unboxing and to where you see the pen. They really present it well. With the pen out of the box, we need to get to the nib. Now, to be honest, as long as it doesn't take 20 turns to uncap a pen, I'm fine. But how many turns does this pen take to get uncapped? The Visconti Medici Oversize takes about a quarter turn with a push in on their patented hook and latch system. I love this capping mechanism if I didn't fiddle with it with my hands, but that's a me, not a pen problem. I think this unlocking mechanism for the cap is absolutely brilliant. And for wanting to cap and uncap while in a meeting, it's great because there's, it's so fast, it's practically like a pull cap. This gets us to the nib. This pen has their palladium broad nib on it. I had a little bit of reservation about this because of what I feel like is overblown talking about problems with the Visconti nibs. Now, I haven't had a single problem with this or the Van Gogh that I have, so I haven't experienced any problems with their nibs, and yet some of the reviews focusing on a nib problem made me a little weary about it. Now, let's ink this pen up. The Visconti Medici is a vacuum filler that holds approximately 1.8 milliliters of ink. The ink for today is Sailor Studio 235. It does hold a pretty good amount of ink, which gives you quite a bit of writing time with this pen, which is nice because it is a very pleasant experience to write with and almost no feedback at all. I will say that the absence of an ink window does quite a few times leave me where I see the ink or the pen drying up in its writing, opposed to it would have been nice with a window. As a habit, I don't normally post my pens, but some pens need to be posted and some people prefer to post their pens. 
Technically, this pen can post. The cap does fit on there. But not having a cap band, I don't feel comfortable with that. And for that, since it's an oversized, it's plenty large enough to fit in my hand without it, and I'll hold on to the cap. But technically, you could post it. If you enjoy videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, the important part, the writing sample. This was a pen that I really wanted to get my hands on because of how beautiful it looks. This is a gorgeous pen. And every time I get my hands on it, I do smile a bit because of how nice it looks. It's really one of the most beautiful pens I have. And other than a personal issue with my fingers on the locking and I don't want to make that like it's an issue people harp on. It's a thing for me. Its writing is again very smooth with the tiniest bit of feedback. It's much less feedback than I would prefer which for people wanting very smooth nibs I think this is a great way to go. Now another advantage when it comes to this is I could purchase a replacement nib so it's not the end of the world if the nib size you chose wasn't the one you wanted. While writing, I do find that the faceted shape of the barrel is very pleasing in my hand. I really like faceted pens. This was my first faceted pen and I really like how it feels. It's very comfortable in how it lies on the hand. And when you put it on the desk, because of it, it's not going to roll away. So, an added advantage. I definitely like using it, and I would be willing to get more Visconti if it wasn't for the issues that will eventually come up with the Van Gogh. But if this pen was my first Visconti experience, which it was my second, so even with the Van Gogh issues that will come up in another video, it didn't stop me from being willing to get this one. And this one is a winner. And it just might take a little bit more on my side to stop fidgeting with that lug. Stop feeling it up, if you will. Now for something a bit more standard in comparing writing size. I use Namiki Blue to do this. Here it is with a Yovo Extra Fine on the left, medium in the middle, and a 1.1 stub on the right. I feel lucky that I got a hold of the Palladium nibs when they still had them because as I understand it, they've gone back to gold. And I do find this one to be a little stubby as a broad. Now, I don't mind the stubbiness. I do like the line variation that it can give. It does mean that in its cross stroke, it is a bit thinner than its downstroke. So how does it compare in writing size to other nibs I've used? Looking at the writing of a Visconti Medici Oversize with a broad nib, here it is next to a Pilot Metropolitan with a stub, with a 1.0 stub, a Pelican M800 with a medium, a Diplomat Arrow with a broad nib, a Caveco Sport with a broad nib, a Pelican M1005 with a medium nib, and a Pelican M805 with a broad nib.
It isn't a pen review without doing some size comparisons. Here it is capped, here it is uncapped, and here it is posted. I like larger pens and I know it. This is a larger pen. It's absolutely perfect in its size. And I do wish that some of these larger pens were not so expensive to get a hold of. At this point, we have a dirty pen that we need to go ahead and clean. Be sure to check out the next pen review when we take a look at the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya version 1. If you want to be able to support not just my channel, but any reviewer, then when you make a purchase, be sure to tell that retailer where you heard about it. Thanks for watching.